I woke up today and decided I should move my website to a new web host. I'm getting sick of some of the disadvantages of my static web hosting solution, and I'm going to move to Caddy. So come along with me on this adventure as I set up Caddy on a virtual private server hosted in the cloud to host my website. So what does my website situation look like now? It's not that bad, but it's not fantastic. So this is kind of a diagram of what's going on now. So I edit my website in Visual Studio Code, and it's written in Markdown. I then push it to GitHub, where it's stored in a private repository. And I also generate the HTML with Hugo. So realistically, what actually happens is GitHub is just kind of used as a cloud storage backup. The actual repository is on my laptop. I make changes in Visual Studio. I commit them to the local repo. I push them up. And then from the local repo, I generate the HTML with Hugo and push that out to a node with S3. So the laptop is basically the center of everything. If I want to push an update, I have to write it in Markdown, which is normal. I commit it, and then I regenerate the website with Hugo and push the changes. So the downside is that things aren't automated, so my publisher has to do more work. He's not a fan of doing work, as, uh, as happens. So really the problem is that when I write pages in Markdown and I commit them, I have to manually run the command to regenerate the site. And it's essentially automated, I just have to hit the button. But I have to hit the button, so that means I have to be awake. If I want to publish things at a certain time, I can put that in the markdown and Hugo will respect it, but Hugo won't run at the right time to regenerate the site. So what I really need is some automation that says if something's been pushed to the repository and or something has hit its time or just periodically check, that we should regenerate the site and um, yeah. So then the data gets pushed to Linode's object storage which serves it for all of you. So if I open up their documentation here, yeah, S3 compatible object storage. Um, Support static websites. So this is essentially the feature I'm using. So essentially what Linode allows and what most S3 compatible providers do is you can access your data in your bucket directly over the web. So I have a CNAME record for www.appler.net that points to my Linode bucket. Then the Linode bucket has the contents of my website, which were generated by Hugo and then uploaded. And all of you can view it. And that's great. Now the downside to this is that I can't run any code on the website, which is fine. I don't need to. It's all static. But also I don't have any logs from the website, I have no analytics, and I don't want to use Google Analytics. So I don't have a lot of options for getting data from the site, or if I want to, in the future, make some more dynamic programming things. The, the system can't handle that. I would have to get a new VPS host just for the dynamic parts of the website and keep the static parts separate. So moving everything to a more VPS style host is a bit of a goal of mine. And now is a good time to thank this video's sponsor, ProtoArc, and their two-in-one hub mouse. Are you on the go a lot and sick of carrying around dongles for everything in your life that isn't USB-C? Me too. I love working with the robot kids, but all of their stuff still uses micro USB. But no worries, I can just whip out my ProtoArc 2-in-1 hub mouse, pop out the included USB-C hub, and have a USB-A port at my fingertips. Easy. Or maybe you're the kind of person that does a lot of presentations. You can be sure that wherever you're presenting it probably doesn't have the right cable to connect to your laptop. But, good thing I have the ProtoArc 2-in-1 hub mouse. Pop out the hub and I have a USB-C to HDMI adapter. Plus, I can use the mouse to click my presentation. Easy. The wireless mouse supports connecting to up to two Bluetooth devices, plus the RF receiver built into the hub. That's right, the hub itself is also the mouse dongle. When you need an extra little bit of connectivity, just pop the hub out and you've got a convenient USB-A, HDMI, and USB-C port ready to go. The USB-C port also supports power delivery and can pass that power onto the laptop as well. When you're all done, the hub tucks neatly back into the mouse to fit in even the smallest laptop bag without clutter. Follow the link in the description to get yours today. Now back to the video. So what would my dream setup look like? Well, let's take a look at the diagram for that. So what I'd like to do is continue writing my site in Markdown in Visual Studio Code, but I want the rest of it to not be done on my laptop. So ideally, I would move to something like Gitty which is a self-hosted Git solution. But for now, I'm going to stick with GitHub because I already have it and I don't want to do too much in one video. So then what I'd like to happen is when I push changes to Gitty or GitHub, the Hugo system will pull that down and re-render and then Caddy can serve it out to you. Then at the same time, the Caddy access logs can go into Goat Counter. So Goat Counter is a basic self-hosted and privacy respecting analytics tool that doesn't need a whole lot of information and doesn't collect a whole lot of information. So it's going to read the access logs from Caddy. So there's no JavaScript running on your end. There's no tracking pixels or anything like that. 
It's just reading the access logs and seeing how many times each page was viewed so we can count uh, what pages are popular, what images are popular, those sort of things. That helps me a lot in knowing what people like. And it can also do things like tell me broadly what country my users are from. Um, I would like to add some features to track how many people are using HTTP 3 um, and IPv6, but it doesn't do either of those right now. But it basically just does basic analytics that's helpful for me without being privacy invasive for you. And at the same time, I also want to add a static URL shortener. So this is something I don't have now, but it'd be nice to be able to add short YouTube links in my YouTube videos that redirect somewhere else. And so I'm going to add that at the same time. So given that I want to move from object hosting to a virtual private server, what are my options? The logical choice would be to stick with Linode. So let's see what their offering is. So I have object storage. I would be going to shared CPU. So cheapest node here, the Nanode. So I get five bucks a month, one gig of RAM, one CPU, 25 gigs of storage, one gig transit, and wicked fast networking. So that's not a bad deal. It's actually what I'm paying right now for object storage. So this would be essentially a drop-in replacement, but I only get one CPU and one gig of RAM. Now, Caddy is not the most intensive process to run. My website's entirely static, so there's no backend scripts, PHP, CGI running. Um, so it should be fine in one gigs of RAM. But there doesn't give me much room for expansion if I want to do other things in this VPS at the same time. So let's see what some other options are. So then I took a look at Hetzner. They're pretty popular in the self-hosted community as well for being reasonably priced. Make sure you set your VAT to US because otherwise you pay VAT. Um, so I'd be looking at cloud. Probably not gonna afford a dedicated server. And we scroll down here, they have data centers in Germany, Finland, and the US. And any of those would probably be reasonable for me. So for some reason they default you to the ARM cores, which are honestly pretty cheap. So I could do an ARM one, that'd be fun. Uh, Ampere Ultra. Or I could do traditional x86. So they have Xeon and Epic. And so with a Xeon based system, I could get one core, two gigs of RAM, 20 gigs of disk, because a little bit less disk. Yeah, and a little bit more RAM. A lot more traffic, and but I have to be in uh, Germany or Finland for that. But that is 379 euro monies a month. And if I want to be in the US, I have to go up to an AMD Epic, which is pretty great because AMD Epics are pretty epic. But I get two of those and two gigs of RAM and 40 gigs of space for 435 euro monies a month. So that is, with conversion rate, that is cheaper than my Nanode here. And I get two cores and two gigs. Another option is to go V6 only. And I love it that Hetzner offers this because it shows people the real cost of V4. Then I could save, uh, it's like 50 euro cents. Yeah, so if nobody wants to access my website over v, uh, V4, it's say 50 euro cents a month. Great. So I really wish is I could get this node in Ashburn or I could host my website in Falkenstein or Helsinki to use the cheaper one, or I could pay the extra 50 euro cents a month, host an Ashburn with Epic. So those are my options. Maybe someday I'll just get two of them and then I can do geo-replication across continents and show you guys how to do DNS geolocating and things like that, which is a wildly fun topic that's quite complicated. So let me know in the comments if you wanna see that video. So this is what I settled on. I'm gonna get a CPX 11 hosted in Ashburn, Virginia geographically closest to me. Um, it's not too far away from my viewers in the EU. And I feel sorry for everyone in Australia that watches my content, but um, yeah, no, no server in your region. So now that that's picked out, let's log in and set it up. Oh boy, this was an exciting day, but everything's finally working now. Website's running, you're free to access it. Uh, Goat counter in particular was a bit of a struggle bus. So well, let's chat about what happened with OML. So to start, I installed Caddy from Deb Packages. Got it up and running at www.2.ablar.net. Not gonna mess with production, you know, that's why we have staging. The caddy file is super simple. Caddy has excellent defaults for most people. So with just a few directives, I have a site up and running with automatic TLS certificates and Let's Encrypt. I was already using Let's Encrypt before, but um, the object storage didn't have a way of doing automatic TLS certificates with Let's Encrypt. So we had to do them manually and then copy the certs into Linode's cloud manager, which was kind of a pain in the ass. So to get a copy of my website on the server without adding my GitHub user credentials to the server, so if the server is compromised, they won't have my GitHub credentials, I used GitHub's deployment keys. So this is a feature where you create an SSH key on the server and then add it to GitHub and it gets read-only access to the repository. So this way the server can do a git pull, it can get the latest copy of the um, website code, 
then I can do a Hugo build on the server in the www directory, and all's good. So Hugo, again, was very easy to install. I just installed it from apt, apt install Hugo. It worked great. I had absolutely no problems with Hugo. So at this point, I pointed all my DNS records to the new server, so my A and my quad A. I used to have a DNS redirect from applar.net to www.applar.net because www is a C name record to Linode objects. So now those are both quad A's and A's for both applar.net and www.applar.net. So all four of those records are in DNS, all pointing to the same server. Uh, so the server can do the redirects, so it has the URI properly, supports v6 properly, and the new server supports HTTP3, which is quick, which is cool. So if you're into uh, UDP, my site is probably one of the only ones you'll visit that supports it fully, uh, which is kind of magical to me. I think it's cool. So where it started to break down a bit was logging and goat counter, those two together. Um, so currently my website, as hosted by Linode, or prior to today, as hosted by Linode, uh, don't have any sort of logging at all. So the website itself has essentially no JavaScript. There's a tiny amount of JavaScript that renders the menu bar. But if you disable JavaScript, you'll just get the mobile and the desktop version of the menu together. It's not really a big deal, and unless you're on mobile, you won't even notice. So I did this because it's a privacy-respecting website. I don't want to have a lot of trackers. I don't want to have any trackers. And I don't want to be collecting any data that I don't absolutely need to run the website. And since the website is essentially static, there's no user accounts, there's no comments, I shouldn't be needing to collect data for the website to function. And that's the philosophy I'm keeping. Because I don't have user accounts, because I don't have comments, that's not the kind of data I want to collect. Um, if I were to grow a bigger community site, like a forum or something like that, it'd be a different story. But um, for now, for the, the static content that I'm creating, it's not something that needs detailed analytics. But I do want some sort of analytics. I want to, well, first of all, I have no idea how many people even look at my website. Um, the only stat I got from Linode was how many gigabytes of transfer I had, and the entire web is 140 megabytes. So 140 megabytes, if I get like five gigs of transfer a month used, I have a thousand to use, um, that tells me people downloaded the entirety of the website, what is that, like eight times five is like 40 times. So that's quite a few page views, but I don't know what pages are popular or things like that. Google gives me search statistics on their end, as does um, Bing. Yeah cringe, <laughs> um, but uh, they're not terribly useful to me. So I wanted to know what pages people are going to. And the other statistic I wanted is if people are on desktop or mobile and what country they're from, because I want to be able to optimize the website for viewers in specific regions. Um, it's a particular interest of mine how like geographical DNS works. So Go Counter. Go Counter is pretty easy to install at first. It's a Go app, so Go apps are famously very easy to distribute and compile. They can be compiled down to static binaries just for x86-64. You just need one file to download into the binary. It's awesome. None of this Node.js package manager crap. It's just a single binary. I love it. So I downloaded it, put it in user local bin. I was good to go... not quite. So Go counter is designed to parse Apache-style common log format logs or the Apache style extended common log format, uh, combined logs. So these basically have a series of information in text, including the IP address of the requester, the timestamp, um, so let's, let's say like git, and then the URI, and then 200, um, and then the referrer, and the user agent string. And so that information is all passed in the log file in a relatively unformatted way, just kind of stream of consciousness to the web server. And Caddy doesn't use that log format at all. So Caddy uses a JSON-based format that has a whole bunch of information in it, and you can turn different fields on and off, and it's absolutely wonderful if you actually want to parse these with a computer. But I want to use parser design for old Apache, and uh, so I had to make Caddy speak Apache-style logs, or make Go Counter speak Caddy-style logs, and I decided it was easier to make Caddy speak Apache-style logs. So to do that, I went in and I compiled my own version of Caddy. I know this sounds wonderful, doesn't it? The whole reason we're using Caddy is because it's so easy to use. But it was easy to compile too. So I installed xcaddy. I told it I wanted to compile with the log transform add-on and it did it and it worked, it worked fine. Followed the documentation and there's probably some links down in the description or in my blog post on how this worked. And uh, magic, I had log files printed out. So next up, since I'm privacy respecting, the IP addresses of users are considered to be somewhat personally identifying information. So I don't want to keep them just on the server forever. So when Go counter reads the log file, it takes the IP address and that whole query string that it gets from Caddy, and it takes the IP address and it uses it to look up the country that the address came from. Nothing more detailed than the country, just the country. So that'll identify you, I mean, 
if you're from a really small country, it might identify you. But realistically, it's going to say, like, you're from the U.S. or you're from Germany or wherever. And those are where most of my viewers are from, just to give them some percentages. So at that point, Goat Counter throws away the IP address. It just got the um, country, which is what it cared about, and it adds that to the log. So the log files that Goat Counter keeps are completely anonymized. They're page counts for each page, page counts per refer, page counts per country, but they're just statistics like that. They're not individual log entries. They're not even correlated between pages and countries. So like, I don't have a stat of each country of each page. I have a stat of each page, and I have a separate stat of each country for the whole site. They're not merged together. So it's very rough analytics, and it's the kind of stuff that I think is quite reasonable for a web admin to collect. So what do I do about the log files, though? Because Caddy spits out these log files, and GoCounter imports them, it follows them. So how do I make sure the log files don't end up getting leaked or something like that? So what I've chosen to do is put the log files in the run file system. So on Linux, slash run is a tempfs uh, RAM disk, essentially. And systemd can make folders and run for us if I just tell it that it needs it. So I edited the service file for Caddy. I told it that it needed a folder in run called access. And sure enough, system starts up slash run slash access. Caddy can dub its logs there. When Caddy stops, systemd will automatically clear the folder. When the system reboots, run gets deleted, obviously, so there's no more logs. And I just need to make sure Goat Counter doesn't run when Caddy doesn't, because then Goat Counter would complain that it can't find the file. So that's how I'm protecting personally, personal information and log files. It's not stored on the server, it's just stored in a RAM disk. I'm only storing the last 10 megabytes of logs, which is not a ton. Caddy's going to delete old ones after 10 megabytes. And um, if Caddy restarts or the server restarts, logs go away. It's gone. So after all that drama, I set up a systemd service for Goat Counter and for the Goat Counter log ingest daemon. And those are on my website too. Systemd is an absolutely wonderful tool. Um, big, big heart for Systemd. It does everything that a daemon monitor should do. No need for any of the stock or junk. The, uh, the admin of Goat Counter, the author of Goat Counter, has a fantastic link on his description of uh, why he doesn't use Docker. And uh, I'll put it down below too so you can listen to it. It's pretty funny. Last step. So I want my website to automatically republish. So I set up a Systemd unit that runs all the commands necessary to publish the site. So it does git pull, and it does hugo build, and it does that from the web directory as the web user. So once that system gets, um, so once that service gets kicked off, it runs, systemd collects the logs, all's good. And then I can set up a systemd timer to run every day at a certain time of day to kick off that systemd service to run. So again, the systemd unit files are like heart, heart for systemd. And a uh, blog post linked down below has all the systemd units I used. So I hope you enjoyed this overview of how my website is hosted on the back end. I have posted sanitized versions of all of my configs in the blog post linked down below, hosted on the website that you've uh, listened to my ramblings about setting up in this video. Um, of course, feel free to reach out to me on Discord if you like hanging out with me. There's lots of like-minded people there that are smart and uh, like doing Linux and self-hosted kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, hop over there, um, like and subscribe to the video. YouTube likes that for some reason. And uh, yeah, as always, I'll see you on the next adventure.